Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the oldest post of the Corps, Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., celebrating over a half century of performing evening parades here in our nation's capital. We are blessed in America, and uh, those of you who have enjoyed this evening so far know that we're blessed in America because of the kind of men and women and children who gather here tonight. It's a wide range of uh, individuals from the military, from the Congress, from the Senate, from industry, from all walks of life. Sometimes Americans stand out and do more than is required. Lee is a Marine, a Marine who was quite successful in the Marine Corps. He's more than a leader and a manager. He's also an innovator. He owns more than 30 patents of inventions related mostly to the beverage industry. But the reason that we find him to be the perfect guest of honor for us tonight is because of his contribution to Marines and the Marine Corps. He's a founder of the Marine Corps Heritage Foundation. He's a founder of the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Association. He is one of the wonderful individuals who oversee the National Museum of the Marine Corps down in Quantico, Virginia. And we are just so thankful uh, for his contributions. There are few ways we can pay back someone by, like Lee, and having a parade in his honor is one of those ways. So without, without uh, continuing on as I could, please join me in a round of welcome for Mr. Harry Lee Crisp III. This is a, a wonderful place, a very special place to us as Marines, and this is a, a perfect evening. God has uh, granted us beautiful weather. We're very thankful for that. The general mentioned the, the museum, the Marine Corps Museum. It, it, it's a unique place uh, amongst museums. There are wonderful museums around here and wonderful museums around the world, but that place is really, a, it's a special place to Marines, a, a sacred place. And the one thing that I do there and I noticed that was different than any other museum is you don't just look up, you look into. You look into the eyes of those veterans as they gaze and they see the walls and they see the different uh, uh, ex exhibits in the museum. You look into those young kids as they, they are in awe of the history of the Marine Corps and all the sacrifices. And I know of no other place uh, quite like that. It is truly a sacred place. Thank you, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Uh, God bless America, God bless the Marine Corps, and simplify. Lee, on behalf of uh, all Marines, we thank you for your generous contributions to our Corps and country, and I hope that you'll find a place for this, uh, either in your home, Stacy, but more likely in the office, right? <laughs> thank you, sir, very Congratulations much. and thank, thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. The ceremony you were about to witness was first conducted at the barracks on July 5th, 1957. While the parade is standard for Marine units throughout the world, some of the events have been modified to showcase the unique abilities of our marching and musical units. Tonight we celebrate the pride, professionalism, and esprit de corps that are hallmarks of this barracks and the Marines who have distinguished these hallowed grounds for over two centuries. They represent all Marines around the globe who embody our Corps' values of honor, courage, and commitment. Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to introduce our host for this evening, the Deputy Commandant of the Marine Corps for Aviation, Lieutenant General George J. Troutman, accompanied by his wife, Zoe. And now, please join in welcoming our guest of honor, the President and Chief Operating Officer of Pepsi Mid-America, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Crisp Container Corporation, Marine veteran, and Founder, Director, and Treasurer of the United States Marine Corps Heritage Foundation, Mr. Harry Lee Crisp III, accompanied by his wife, Stacy.
begin our ceremony with a performance by the premier musical unit of our American Armed Forces, the President's Own United States Marine Band. The band traces its roots back to July 11, 1798, when an act of Congress was signed by President John Adams, authorizing the Marine Corps to employ a drum major, a fife major, and 32 fifers and drummers. Marine musicians first performed at the White House on New Year's Day 1801, beginning a tradition of musical support for the Commander-in-Chief that would later be adopted as the Marine Band's primary function, and one that has continued without interruption since the inauguration of President Thomas Jefferson. Today, the Marine Band proudly carries out its mission of providing music for the President of the United States and the Commandant of the Marine Corps. The band will open with a march composed by Kenneth J. Alford entitled Army of the Nile. The Marine Band's most famous director was John Philip Sousa. He was born in 1854 on Capitol Hill, just a block and a half from the barracks. Sousa led the band from 1880 to 1892, during which time he began composing the marches that later earned him the title, the March King. Of all his marches, one so embodied our American spirit that in 1987, an act of Congress was signed by President Ronald Reagan, proclaiming it the National March of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, celebrating over 211 years of serving as the guardian of American musical tradition, the Marine Band will now perform Sousa's most famous march, the Stars and Stripes Forever.
established on March 31st, 1801. This site was chosen for the new Marine garrison by President Thomas Jefferson while riding on horseback through the new capital city, along with our second commandant, Lieutenant Colonel William Ward Burroughs. It is the oldest active post of the United States Marine Corps. The Marines assigned to this barracks fulfill a variety of missions in and around the Washington area to include performing parades and ceremonies, providing presidential support, maintaining infantry proficiency, and serving the distance education and training needs of Marines worldwide through courses developed and administered by the Marine Corps Institute. The flag flying over the barracks this evening is a replica of the national ensign displaying 15 stars and 15 stripes that would have flown here in 1801. Just beyond the north end of the parade deck stands the historic home of the commandants. It has been the residence of every Marine Commandant since its completion in 1806. The present occupants are the 34th Commandant and his lady, General and Mrs. James T. Conway. During our nation's bicentennial in 1976, the barracks and the Commandant's house together were designated a National Historic Landmark by the United States Department of the Interior.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to introduce the official mascot of Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., Corporal Chesty the 13th. A pedigree English Bulldog, Corporal Chesty the 13th enlisted in the Marine Corps in May 2008. The first barracks mascot was named in honor of the most decorated Marine in history, Lieutenant General Louis B. Chesty Puller, a name that has been inherited by every mascot of the oldest post.
Battalion, Bugs, Bayonet. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors. March on the colors! The Marine Corps color guard before you is unique. Flanked by two Marine riflemen, our national flag is carried by the color sergeant of the Marine Corps, while the non-commissioned officer to his left carries the official battle color of the Marine Corps. The 54 streamers and silver bands displayed with the battle color commemorate the military campaigns in which Marines have participated. They span the entire history of our nation, from the Revolutionary War to the combat operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. Decorated with palms, oak leaf clusters, and stars, they represent more than 400 awards and campaigns of the United States Marines. It is the privilege of Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., to be entrusted with the custody of this battle color. Post the colors! Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Sir, Mario. 
Sergeant! Attack! Here! Pray! Death! Here! Sir, the parade is formed. Take your post, sir. Staff! Draw! Publish the order, sir. Attention to orders! Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. 1 July 2010. Officer of the day today, Captain Drake. Officer of the day tomorrow, Chief Warrant Officer Murdoch. By order of Andrew A. Smith, Colonel, United States Marine Corps, Commanding of Dutch Center. The Marines in the spotlight represent over six decades of marching and rifle drill precision, a legacy of honor, commitment, and discipline that began during the sunset parades of 1948. These Marines perform for hundreds of thousands of spectators annually throughout our nation and abroad. The M1 rifles they carry with fixed bayonets are standard for all our marching platoons and weigh in excess of 10 and one half pounds. The platoon executes its drill sequence without verbal cadence or commands. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Barracks Washington, D.C. proudly presents the United States Marine Corps Silent Drill Platoon.
нужно.
of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, others pride in every American heart, and it's time to stand and say, Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege for Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. to have as our guest of honor this evening, the President and Chief Operating Officer of Pepsi MidAmerica, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Crisp Container Corporation, Marine Veteran, and Founder, Director, and Treasurer of the United States Marine Corps Heritage Foundation, Mr. Harry Lee Crisp III.
joining our distinguished guest in the reviewing area are the deputy coming out of the marine corps for aviation lieutenant general george j troutman and the commanding officer of marine barracks washington colonel andrew h smith ladies and gentlemen please rise for honors Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. March the command in review. Aye, aye, sir.
Ladies and gentlemen, please join us as we observe evening colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as we pause to honor those gallant men and women who have given their lives in the service of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. On behalf of Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., thank you for your attendance this evening at Semper Fidelis. We hope you have enjoyed your visit here at Ethan I, the oldest post of the world.